Rated T for Teen. Greetings Ascended and welcome back to the wonderful world of Talara. My name is Seaton and I am not but a humble YouTuber here to give you some tips and tricks on how to, you know, get back into the game, what has changed and all of the exciting stuff that you can do in Rift. So without further ado, we're gonna get this uh, party started. First things first, if you haven't played since November 2012, you've probably missed out on the Storm Legion expansion. Now, this introduced two huge continents called Bravain and Duskin, which actually tripled the size of land in Rift. Uh, these can be accessed by going to your capital city and talking to somebody called a Lyceni Ambassador, who will be able to port you to either the Kingdom of Pelidade, Cape Jewel, or Tempest Bay, which are all different zones in the Storm Legion content. So I'd suggest if you're level 48 and above and want to get stuck into that, you head to your capital city and find the Lyceni Ambassador and get your kind of Storm Legion adventure started today. One of the most notable additions to the Storm Legion expansion was in fact something called Dimensions, which are really Rift's take on player housing. So the way Dimensions work are there are a wide variety of kind of set dimension locations that you can access via dimension keys that you earn in all sorts of different ways. They can be via quest, uh, via crafting, via achievements, um, or just, you know, buying them off the, the certain vendors. So there are a lot of dimensions available. I think there's currently um, just over a hundred in the game, which is, uh, you know, gives you quite a lot of choice. All dimensions are gonna be kind of like a fragmented reality of kind of your favorite locations in the game. The way that the system works and has evolved is that players will communicate, hey, I really want this place as my dimension, because, you know, I want a giant ice monster in my dimension, or I want a dimension in the plane of death, or I want a dimension that's underwater somewhere or I want a dimension in the middle of the desert. You know, it's kind of just stuff like that. And the developers will go, hey, you know what? We, we can do that, guys. There you go. Here's your magical key to your new house. Uh, and enjoy it. Dimensions are very cool. I definitely suggest checking them out. Storm Legion also introduced a wide variety of dungeons, instant adventures, chronicles, and a new kind of questing system known as Carnage Quests. Now, the way the Carnage Quests work is you'll go out into the open world and, for example, find some sort of angry goblin villager and if you kill him then you will be given a quest to kill for example uh, seven or nine more goblin villagers and then for that you will receive a big chunk of experience and some currency and sometimes a bit of notoriety as well uh, with a faction relevant to the zone that you're killing mobs in. Now this feature has pretty much been added to uh, almost every mob in the Storm Legion zones and also the Nightmare Tide zones which we're going to talk about in a little bit. One thing I would also like to touch on is the quality of life improvements to the instant adventure system. So when you open the instant adventure interface you'll see instead of a launch list of kind of different adventures across all of the zones in the game you have kind of three different types you can click on there will always be a featured one at the top and then you've got instant adventure and then you've got intrepid adventures now the featured one is kind of just like the latest and greatest instant adventure uh, instant adventure itself sends you to a completely random one where there will already be quite a large group of people and after a few instant adventures uh, that will generally change zones so that's uh, pretty cool. You keep moving around, keep stuff fresh, uh, so that's pretty awesome. And then finally, you've got Intrepid Adventures, which will take you back to uh, basically the days of Hamanil, and you can do instant adventures inside there. Uh, so while those are a, a bit harder, they also do provide a bit more of a greater reward. Another very important quality of life change to note is that towards the end of Storm Legion, there was a rather significant change made to the way that gear works in Rift. You used to have uh, one set of gear for fighting other players called PvP gear and one set of pl uh, gear for fighting enemies called PvE gear. Now the gear is essentially one and the same, which means that you can advance through PvP and then use the gear that you collect to go to PvE 
Alternately, you could advance through PvP and then go into a war front and you won't be complete cannon fodder, so it works quite well in both ways. I know probably what a lot of you are thinking, what happens if I'm the best raider in the world, I clear all the content and have amazing PvE gear, am I just going to win in PvP? There is actually an upper level on the power of gear that you can have when you are in instance PvP or PvP combat, so if you have like all these relic amazing weapons in PV uh, that you've acquired from PvE rating, they are going to be bolstered down to kind of the equivalent level of the best weapons that you can get via PvP, so it kind of puts everybody on an even level playing field, which is pretty cool. Now, in addition to all of the stuff we've already talked about, Storm Legion also brought a new soul for every class. Now, the Warriors got a soul known as Tempest, which is kind of like a lightning-throwing range DPS spec. Uh, Rogues got a soul called Tactician, which can be both a damaging or healing spec. It's kind of, you know, in the middle, as it fits uh, both into kind of decent damage specs and decent healing specs. But what Tactician does is it uses kind of a mixture of, uh, like, flamethrowers, and power cores and all that kind of uh, really interesting Imperium technology in order to deal damage or heal allies. You actually have kind of like a, a healing flamethrower called Curative Torrent and there's a lot of fun stuff with the specs. So yeah, it's definitely one of my favorites. Cleric's got an additional kind of damage mitigation slash healing spec called the Phyla which uses dark magics to kind of cast links on allies and kind of reduce the damage while also kind of when they deal damage you put stacks of like uh, foul growths on allies and you can explode those for burst healing. It's a very odd spec but at the same time it is very cool. Finally Mage's got a spec called Harbinger which is kind of basically a very fast paced melee spec that incorporates all sorts of like slashing abilities uh, combined with spells and stuff and when you reach that grand old max level you actually get the ability to transform into like this Imperium monster with glaives and stuff and that is pretty damn fantastic. The Storm Legion expansion also featured 9 dungeons and 11 raids. So if you are looking to venture to level 60 you have plenty to do on the way and even when you get to kind of end game the raids in a way are still relevant for all the stuff they offer via achievements, drops, wardrobes and kind of the general experience. Now once you hit that grand old level of level 60 it's time to venture to Nightmare Tide content. So to actually access the Nightmare Tide content all you need to do is find your nearest Porter Cullum once you reach level 60 and you will notice that the Plane of Water unlocks and you can port to the first location in the Luminous Passage. As of 3.4, Nightmare Tide content contains currently five zones. The first of the zones is Gaboru Reef, which is kind of your 60 to 61 area. It's going to be where you uh, start off your adventure in the Plane of Water, do a bit of questing there. Uh, from 62 to 64, you'll want to move up to Dromheim, which is the wonderful City of Dreams. Very crazy and kooky zone, a lot is going on there, so I definitely suggest paying quite close attention to the story, as some of the lines are very interesting and entertaining so I think you'll find quite a lot of mystery there and then the final zone from 64 to 65 is Tarkin Glacier and the, by the time you hit that point and have finished that zone you are going to be that grand old level of level 65. Now it's level 65 the game is really really going to open up for a lot of players. Two zones that will also become kind of accessible and advisable to a go to are both Tyrant's Forge which is kind of in the southern parts of the Plane of Water but more importantly the new zone introduced in 3.4 the Plane Touched Wilds. It is pretty much the biggest zone in Rift and it is very very cool. The story quests are amazing. They are very very tongue-in-cheek and very cheeky quest I might add so you're gonna have a brilliant time pretty much the full storyline is voice acted as well so if you are kind of venturing to Plain Touch Wilds and do want a really really just enjoyable few hours questing I definitely suggest just turning up your volume getting all the in-game sounds because like you are gonna have so much fun doing those quest lines a few other things that we're gonna talk about as well are the features that Nightmare Tide actually brought to the game now one of the first things is something 
something called Nightmare Rifts, which is kind of a new type of rift that were introduced at the start of the expansion. The basic idea behind Nightmare Rifts are these rifts that start off kind of in fairly, you know, manageable difficulty, but then just spiral out of control with unending waves of mobs that will just get progressively, progressively harder. Um, and there are all sorts of mechanics thrown in. There are different kind of tiers of Nightmare Rifts. So uh, there's like tier one ones and tier six. And as you move up through the tiers, you're going to notice that bosses and mobs will have more kind of like difficult and interesting abilities. Um, so, you know, maybe in the tier one ones, you're not going to see much like ground AoE, but when you get to the tier five and six, there's going to be a lot of like uh, slams and kind of bombs and all that kind of exciting stuff to avoid, um, you know, going on constantly throughout the stages and just kind of randomly appearing just to take you by surprise and all that kind of, you know, exciting jazz that will just get you from out of nowhere. With nine Merifs, you do have the option of buying either laws that you can open in a private instance so that, you know, other people aren't going to interfere with your rift, or you can open them in the open world and just kind of get everybody together and push for the highest stage possible. In the instance ones, you can do groups as well, but those do require a bit more, you know, organization. Um, so, you know, if you're just looking for something that you can jump in, the open ones are, open world ones are fantastic, but if you're looking for something a bit more organized, then you probably want to get a pre-made group and try to push to the highest level that you can in these rifts and you'll be rewarded with stuff like uh, a lot of reputation with the gar which will allow you to buy best in slot essences uh, essences themselves big stacks of planar right and all sorts of like little bonuses and fun stuff the next thing I'd like to cover is something called the Dream Souls that were added in the Nightmare Tide expansion. These have basically kind of closed the gap between classes and the Dream Souls allow your class to basically do everything. So for example, the uh, the Mage Soul uh, with Arbiter, which um, was added into the game, allows mages to tank. The Warrior Soul Liberator allows warriors to heal. The Rogue Soul Physician allows rogues to heal. And the Cleric Soul that was called Oracle that was released allows Cleric to perform the support role, which is mainly used in kind of out raiding environments. So yeah, all classes can do everything now. Healing warriors, tank and mages, you pretty much have it all. With the launch of Nightmare Tide, there was also something brought into the game known as the Minion System. So the kind of Minion System is a kind of resource gathering mini game within Rift. It's themed as a card game, so what you have to do is you uh, collect minion cards throughout various activities in the game, then you can send your minions out on adventures. The more adventures your minions complete, the more powerful they become, their stats grow, and the better they get at finding loot. And there are different types of adventures that will reward you with like uh, crafting resources, artifacts, uh, notoriety, so all kinds of cool stuff that you can get from that system. And you can also access the minions interface anywhere in the game just by pressing the shortcut which will be V. For more PvP focused players, Nightmare Tide has introduced two new warfronts, the first being Gar Station N, where the goal of the warfront is to not only capture but also hold these dark runic vessels which will deal uh, increasing damage to whoever is holding them. Holding these rune vessels will grant that person's team points and then the first team to a thousand points will win the game. The second warfront is called the Assault on the Bronze Tomb and basically your team either gets challenged with either looting or trying to protect the ancient mysteries that the bronze tomb has deep within the heart of it. So as well as all of the cool stuff that we've covered already, it's probably a good idea just to quickly go over some of the stuff that you can already do at Endgame and some of the stuff that is being added. So currently in Nightmare Tide level 65 Endgame, which is the level cap, um, you can do six expert dungeons. There are a total of five raids at the moment. So you have the Ren of Fate, you have Mount Chirax, you have Tyrant's Forge, you have Intrepid Gilded Prophecy, and Intrepid Hammernail. Now, in about a month and a bit's time, Mind of Madness is going to be released, which is the tier 3 raid, and that's hopefully coming mid 3.4, where you're going to get to kind of go into this plane of madness and fight Lord Arak himself. So that is said to be uh, quite an exciting tier of raiding. As well as the dungeons and raids, you have stuff like the Chronicles, you have all the zone events to do, 
You also have something called the Nightmare Saga, which is kind of a long string of level 65 quest lines to find a bit more about Lord Arrak, uh, kind of uncover his plans, and that really gives you a lot of the story behind that. And in return, you will get some very, very powerful tier 1 raid weapons, which, you know, can help newer players uh, quickly advance to kind of the tier 2 uh, stage of raiding. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for my list of kind of very, very big and important changes that have happened in the last couple of years. If you're looking to find out even more information for a returning player, be sure, if you are not already, to head over to the article on the official Rift website, as they have tons and tons of information there for returning players. And if you do need any help at all, be sure to head over to the Rift forums and just ask your questions in kind of the, the new or returning players section in, under general discussion, as there are always tons of, you know, very helpful and happy people there, uh, just, you know, ready to help out new players when they're returning with all of their questions. Finally, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, found it a bit useful. Thank you for watching and have a great day.